Super Bowl announcement. America will be blinded by the lights when the weekend takes the stage as the headliner for the halftime show on February 7th. And what is likely to be a show like no other, TJ Holmes, who is like no other himself, is Thank here you. with the latest. Thank Good morning, you. TJ. Of course, you know, straight, this is the biggest concert of the year. Right, is the biggest event of the year, the Super Bowl. And they pretty much got the biggest star of the year, who's had the biggest song of the year. Blinding Lights actually set a record uh, earlier this year for its position at the top of the Billboard charts. It was there for seven months. The entire pandemic, you've been listening to Blinding Lights. So, of course, now we're expecting a, a halftime show like no other, but because of the pandemic, it's going to be a Super Bowl like no other. Baby, it's you. Perhaps the world's biggest stage. I want to hold them like they do in Texas, please. Graced by music royalty, including a queen. One, two, three, four. Let's get And one prince. Now the weekend will get his turn in the lights. The NFL officially announcing the Grammy winner is the Super Bowl 55 halftime headliner. Being a Super Bowl halftime performer is a challenge no matter what, but one of his biggest challenges is actually a very good problem to have. What's he going to play? I can feel my face when I'm with you, but I love it. Known for hits dancing over the lines of R&B and rock, The Weeknd has already had a chart-topping year. Every song from his latest album, After Hours, charted on Billboard's top 100 list. He was named one of Time Magazine's most influential people of 2020 and already knows how to put on a show in a pandemic, singing high above New York's skyline during the MTV VMAs. The halftime show is the second collaboration between the NFL, Pepsi, and Jay-Z's Rock Nation, and it's already set to make history, the first to be helmed by a black executive producer, Jesse Collins. Back in February, more than 104 million people tuned in for this halftime first, two Latina headliners. 65,000 fans were there as J-Lo and Shakira took the stage in Miami, mixing a message of diversity and unity into their show-stopping set. But this year will look different because of the pandemic. The league telling ABC News it's currently planning on filling at least 20% of Tampa Bay's Raymond James Stadium, meaning about 13,000 fans could attend. They're anticipating more, however, and will work with local and county officials to make a determination. The Super Bowl can also bring in hundreds of millions of dollars to the host city. Miami says it generated more than $572 million in new spending last year as fans partied in the city for days celebrating the big game. And again, as we know, we talk about the possible impact on a city that a Super Bowl brings. We'll get this, guys. The numbers we have officially for 2019 in Atlanta. They had 500,000 visitors mm. to the city. There were 100-plus Super Bowl-related events in downtown Atlanta. 83 artists performed. So we talk about the Super Bowl and how many people can get in there, but there's so many other events related to the Super Bowl that could have a huge impact on Tampa, depending on how this thing looks in a pandemic. Yeah. Well, we got one piece of it. The weekend's going to be there. The weekend. rest yeah. of it, he we'll will pull happens. it off. But yeah, that right. song has been in your head for seven months. It sure has. It's <laughs> one of my daughter's favorites, so yeah. I can't get it out. Uh, TJ, thank you so much. You Appreciate it. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching. And we'll see you in the morning on GMA.